Good evening, everyone. Ah, <sighs> finally time. Finally, finally, Nintendo Direct time. So, want to see if Nintendo can save E3? People are putting a lot of pressure on this thing. On these poor people. <laughs> I'm keeping my expectations low. I just want to see Breath of the Wild 2. That's it. That's the only th I just want to see Breath of the Wild 2. If I see that, I'm happy. <laughs> In before Skyrim gets banned. Yeah, I'm a little... I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little concerned because Nintendo did put out a tweet on their Japanese account that said, please don't co-stream their Direct. But they haven't put anything out, to the best of my knowledge, on, on any of their English channels. So people are sort of assuming, okay, this applies to, to, to the Japanese market for whatever reason, but not to, not to Western markets. So, you know... It, here, here's hoping. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Oh, uh, Paige Marianne, thank you, Mib, Mib, Mimtendo. Yeah, I agree. Thank you for that super chat. Breath of the Wild 2 development is progressing smoothly. We will keep you updated. Yeah, Michael, I, I mean, they, that might be what they go with. They might just, they might just give us that. <laughs> People are hoping for Goku for Smash? <laughs> I don't, I, no, I don't think so. Um... But, you know, stranger things have happened. Ah, five minutes to go. Rabbit for Smash. I mean, there was... A, a, like, uh, Laura K. Dale did make, a like, an argument that Rabbit Peach might be, like, might be an option for one of the Smash DLC. Not both, like, just... <laughs> Not the final one, but, like, might be an option for one of them. <laughs> Have I had a good day so far? Uh, sort of. <laughs> I was, I had a, recorded the Mass Effect for my second channel, and then I slept so that I'd be awake. <laughs> for this. I have low hopes for anything Bayonetta related. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think you should expect Bayonetta, um, to show up. I really don't think so. Yeah, I know, David. I know that they tweeted that they'll copyright streak co uh, co streams. I think I'm fine. I think I'm good. Um, but because like, because like I I kept an eye on that, and like every other YouTube channel is like proceeding as though nothing happened. Like they're they're proceeding on the assumption that Nintendo probably isn't gonna kill like 500 YouTube channels. Um. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, like I'm, I'm just assuming that they'll, they'll be, <laughs> that, that, that they'll hold off on us. An update on Metroid. Yeah, I think an update on Metroid 4 will be there. I don't know that they'll show a trailer or anything, but. At this point, they kind of have to be like, hey, Metroid 4 still exists. New Smash DLC? Yeah, everyone's assuming that there's a new Smash Fighter on the, on the horizon. <clears throat> Imagine the thing killing your channel is watching E3. Yeah, that would be funny. I, I, I will say it would be funny. Dun, dun, dun. Elden Ring for Switch. No, I don't think so. Oh, well, I mean, maybe on the Switch Pro, Elden Ring would work, but they haven't announced that, so. New Fire Emblem. Oh, yeah. Like, that would be, it would be nice to hear something from, from Fire Emblem, like, in terms of what's, what's next after Three Houses, which is such a success. You'd think so. Have you played Kit Icarus Uprising? Nope. Never got to that on, on, uh, on the 3DS. 
<laughs> Another Monster Hunter Stories, Stories 2 trailer. Yeah, at least one. Holy shit, Capcom is pushing that game hard. In before, no Switch Pro announcement. Yeah, I mean, uh, Nintendo has said that this, this Direct is software-focused. They've said it's software-focused, and people have sort of, broadly speaking, interpreted that to mean, okay, so no Switch Pro then. They're not going to show that off yet, because they're not going to launch it uh, until later in the year. So, hmm. Have you played Fire Emblem yourself? Oh yeah, I've played a lot. I've played, I played all the ones on Game Boy Advance. I played the Path of Radiance, Path of the other, the other one, the Path games um, on Wii and GameCube and Three Houses and I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. Nintendo has lied before announcing new hardware before though. Yeah, I mean this is this is true, Evan. Like with Nintendo saying it's a it's a it's a software focused direct, they could still just throw the Switch Pro in there just cuz. <laughs> but it's also the thing of like Nintendo does like to have their own like do things on their own terms. And they would be entirely they would be entirely capable of like using E3 only to announce games and then like 2 months from now like at the at like the beginning of fall they'll come out and say ah here is a direct focusing on new Nintendo hardware What am I looking forward to most in this direct? I'm hoping Breath of the Wild 2. Like, that's the only, that's the, I, I'm keeping my expectations low otherwise, but Breath of the Wild 2 is the one, like, like, I want it. I want it real bad. I want it real bad. My heart says Pikmin 4, my brain says more Skyward Sword footage. Yeah. And if you're hoping for Silk Song news, I have to burst your bubble and say that Team Cherry have said that they're not showing anything at E3 this year. So, like, I I really want to hear about Silk Song too, but not uh, not hopeful about it. Three Houses is my favorite Switch game. Did you enjoy it? Oh yes, a lot. I liked Three Houses a lot. Bayonetta 3 and Metroid Prime 4 would save E3. Yeah, don't expect Bayonetta 3. I, I don't believe we'll hear anything about that game for a while yet. Uh, Metroid Prime 4, we know at least that that game does exist and is in development, whereas Bayonetta 3 is, like, way purveyor, where basically, like, it's... Bayonetta 3 has, has been gone for so long that, like, I would not expect anything from Platinum on that. Who did you marry in Three Houses? Everyone. Like, I, I I played a lot of Three Houses, and my Billeth married everyone, eventually. Oh, here we go. Please note, due to COVID-19, release dates and other information are subject to change. Yes, we know. Let me know if the volume was okay. So, Nintendo, what do you have for us? Hello, everyone. I'm Shinya Takahashi, and I'll be your guide for today's Nintendo Direct. Hello, I'm Yoshiaki Koizumi, and I'll be your guide as well. The Nintendo Switch system is now in its fifth year, and many people around the world are playing games on it. Nintendo ah, they are Switch announcing the Switch Pro. enjoyed by a wide range of players spanning all ages and all levels of gaming They're experience. certainly starting on hardware. Thank you all very much. We've been able to offer a wide variety of games on the system, not just from Nintendo, but also from our many development and publishing partners. 
I hope that each of you watching this Nintendo Direct will be able to find a game that suits your personal Sound up. Okay, we can do that. Today, we have news on upcoming Nintendo Switch games, and we'll be focusing on a selection of games releasing this year. We hope you enjoy it. Better? Okay, to begin, please take a look at this video. Oh, that looks smashy. That is definitely smashy. Oh my god, it's fucking Katsuya! <laughs> or Heihachi, one of the two. Oh, of course it's Tekken. That makes sense. Hey, <laughs> hello, Katsuya. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense for a Smash DLC. Like, it, it makes. After Street Fighter, it makes sense that Tekken would be the next representation. Is it just me or is the sound way out of sync? That would be a Nintendo's end, by the way. But yeah, the, the desynchronization on the sound is on Nintendo's end. I can't really do anything about that. Wins. <laughs> it was... That was a good joke. Very well done. Very well done. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> of course you can't beat Kirby. <laughs> Hello, I'm Masahiro Sakurai uh, from Solar Limited, funny. and the director of the Super Smash Bros. <laughs> Ultimate game. <laughs> Kazuya Mishima from the fighting game series Tekken will join the good battle. Gag. Surprise! I'll go over the details at a later date, so please sit tight. For today, though, we've prepared a short video to showcase Kazuya's moves in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Please take a look. Man, I remember, like, the last Tekken game I played a lot was, like, Tekken 3? Which is a million, hundred billion years ago. But fucking hell, I remember a lot of those moves still. That isn't more nostalgic than I thought it would be. I don't have a lot of, like, I don't have a lot of emotional connection to the Tekken franchise or anything. But, like, it makes sense that, like, that they would bring in Tek Tekken rep for Smash. And of course he has a 10 hit combo. This feels like Tekken. No, it's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'll talk about the fighter more in a future presentation. We still have to record it first, actually. The air date is shown below. Please stay tuned. Thank you, Mr. Sakurai. New fighter Kazuya will join the fight in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Please look forward to seeing how Kazuya, who has experienced many harsh battles across the Tekken series, will fight in this game. Alright, let's continue with our first batch of Nintendo Switch headlines. Your choices matter hmm. in these emotional, supernatural Okay, they, they got Smash out of the way immediately, which means they have something else planned for the one last thing. 
Like, I, I expected the Smash DLC to be the last thing they showed, but since it's not... Wait, hang on. Why are they anime? What? Oh, it's a collection. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> I thought it was a new game for a second there. But okay, that makes sense. Life is Strange collection and then the new one. Okay. That's cool. I've not played Life is Strange, but I know like a lot of people really love these games. And they seem like a good fit for Switch. Life is Strange True Colors launches on Nintendo Switch September 10th. And Life is Strange Remastered Collection comes to Nintendo Switch later this year. There's something for everyone on the Nintendo Switch system. Is there now? You ah, are there's uh, Square Enix's Guardians of the Galaxy. Legendary band of heroes for hire in this thrilling action adventure game. Jump on so a that one actually looks a lot better than anyone was expected from Square. Star Lord's daring combat style and encounter iconic and original Marvel characters. You'll call the shots for the unpredictable Guardians as you face cosmic threats to save the galaxy. You got this. Probably. I just don't know why they made Star Lord look like that. Like, cause Guardians fucking hell, he looks like such a fucking Nintendo Switch October 26th. I, he, he looks like such a fucking Brad. <laughs> everywhere in this real-time oh, hey. based shoot, worms. You'll squish your invertebrate opponents in 32-player cross-platform combat. Play in daily challenges, battle modes, and seasonal It's weird that they're still trying to make worms ranks. happen. Plus, Worms hasn't happened for like exclusive to the a decade version, now. Will be available for free for two weeks after launch. A new map, Spaceport Showdown, launches with Worms Rumble, wriggling onto Nintendo Switch June 23rd. Get a 25% discount when you pre-order the game starting today on Nintendo eShop. The fantastical realm of Orcanon awaits. Oh shit! Is that? Uh, As you explore this fully hand-painted world. That looks like something new from. Uh, fuck! What are they called? The people who did Odin Sphere. Activating turn-based um. combat. Astria Ascending launches on Nintendo Switch September. 30th. It certainly has their, it certainly has their character design aesthetic, which is very. <laughs> Fantasy titties. Return to the funny, charming, and quirky Vanilla world of Two yeah. Point County. In the wholesome management sim Two Point Campus. I gotta say, I don't, I don't see why I would want to play want something it. like Two Point Campus Lots on of Switch. Lots tools are at your disposal to make the school yours and take your educational empire to the next level. I really don't see why I would. Two Point Campus starts on Like I have a Switch PC, next year. and it's not exactly a demanding game. Oh, Donkey Kong! ...into its 20th anniversary this year. Oh, not Donkey Kong. Still monkeys, though. <laughs> Is it a... No, it's a collection. Or what? Like, is it a new game, or are you just releasing yet another remastered collection for the 550 billionth time? Super Monkey Ball is one of the coolest games to watch speedruns of, by the way. Oh, it is new! Oh my god! An actual new game? No? Okay. But it's one of the coolest games to watch speedruns of. Like, it's absolutely fucking amazing to see people speedrun these games. Bananas when Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania rolls onto Nintendo Switch October 5th. Okay then. It's a blast from parties past. Mario Party. Fair enough. I've never been interested, Ready for another but another round of Mario Party Mayhem? Of course you are. It's a superstar collection of Mario Party boards and mini games. Live it up on five classic boards from the Nintendo 64 era, including Peach's Birthday Cake and Spaceland. Wait, Mario Each Party DLC? Zany events guaranteed to keep you on your toes. And when we say zany, we mean it. Jump. Connect blocks. And give facelifts? In hilarious over-the-top minigames. All of which support button controls. 
With 100 mini games from the Mario Party series catalog, you'll have a yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm not super excited by this. <laughs> Here's a little party favor. All game modes work with online play. Even if you're partying solo, Mario Party is fun with friends. With other party but you know, worldwide. Playing a board game online with friends? Save your progress mid-game, grab a snack, then resume the festivities. Stickers are also available to communicate with others. It's time to party in Mario Party Superstars, launching on the Nintendo Switch system October 29th. I'll be okay. It's not, oh, it's not DLC. It's, it's actually they're releasing this new title. Okay, then. What did you think? Before we show this next trailer, I'd like to say one thing. Currently, we're working hard on the latest game in the Metroid Prime series, ah. Metroid Prime 4, which we previously announced. But today, we'd like to introduce another new entry. In oh the shit, the new 2D Metroid. There's been rumors. Oh, give it to me. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Wait, really? Oh, who's developing this? Who's developing this? Who's developing this? Who's developing this? That's that's a sequel to Fusion. Look at Samus' suit. Oh my god. God, I wish that audio wasn't desync. Oh, cool robot. But new 2D Metroid, man. Oh, yes. It has been so long. Oh, jeez. Metroid Dread. So, that looks like it's in the style of Samus Returns, basically. Yeah. Down to the melee counter as well. But it seems a lot more active and mobile. Wait, was that a Chozo? Was that a living Chozo? And it's nice to see her fighting something other than Metroids, actually. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Yeah! This year! Oh, yes! Oh, fuck yeah! That was the trailer for the first new 2D Metroid game in roughly 19 years. Yeah! The brand new Metroid Dread game. As the name Dread implies, this is a Metroid game with a new feel showcasing a variety of threats that Samus will encounter. It's scheduled to be released on October 8th, so it won't be too long until launch. I want to know who the developers are. Day, we'll also be releasing Amiibo figures Ooh, for those Samus. Are cool. and the those enemy, are going to be gone immediately, but those are cool. Video. Let's move on to more Nintendo Switch headlines. All right. These familiar franchises are back on Nintendo Switch. Oh, get okay. Ready yeah, sure. Get down in the latest Just Dance game. I'll be all right. Oh, shit. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, if I'm going to get copyright claimed for anything, it's going to be Just Dance music. So I'm just going to turn the sound off. <laughs> it's just going to turn the music off there. Because Ubisoft are trying to fuck me. <laughs> There we go. The arcade smash hit Cruisin' Blast is speeding onto Nintendo Switch. I have never heard of that in Blast my life. Way through nearly 30 over the top tracks. But you can play as a unicorn, so it's not all the bad. Four players can race together, so pick your favorite vehicle and hit the road. Cruisin' Blast launches as a console exclusive on Nintendo Switch this fall. 
Okay. It's the ultimate Dragon Ball Z experience. Oh, would that be Goku then? The Goku game. We yeah, all okay, Kakarot, yes. Goku and other Z fighters through four sagas in this action RPG. I've heard good things about it. Saiyan, I've never played it though. Protect the Earth from an invasion by Vegeta and Nappa. Frieza, take a stand against the evil Emperor. Cell, battle the androids in a fight to the death. Majin Buu, an epic showdown with the most fearsome foe. Along with the main story, you can explore the vast world of Dragon Ball Z. Hey, why not help out the locals? Or collect ingredients for delicious meals. You could always train to acquire new skills, too. There are lots of things to keep yeah. you busy. I mean, it looks like it's the kind of game that new if, power if it was like one and two is also included. 10 or 15 years Dragon ago, I would have been Ball obsessed Z with Kakarot, this. Plus, a new Power Awakens set punches its way onto Nintendo Switch September 24th. Grab a oh, right, Mario Golf. Ready to tee off. I'm actually kind of interested in this. I, I, I have Mario no Golf interest Super in golf, launches soon. but given that they have that that, like that course, mode where you're like doing battle golf and you're just running and trying Standard to kick golf. people before they can get to their to ball the and shit, like that, on the greens. that to me looks pretty fun. Hit different types of shots and aim for under par. Cause like normal golf, I don't care. I sleep, but speed that golf. right there, speed golf, where everyone's like, after. "Fuck you!" <laughs> it's just with trying to kick each other's ass points. and using Mario powers. Oh shit, Pauline! Battle golf. Do get out yeah, the that shit. That's the good shit. Arena. Capture three flags to win. Golf adventure. Go from rookie to pro with your me character. The golfing challenges that await may surprise yeah, you. Yeah, that shit. That shit right there. And here's some news. Free updates are planned for future release, including additional courses and playable characters. Back to New Donk City, too, the huh? The fairway's almost open, so set your tee time and get ready to ace those shots. Because, yeah, fuck Mario normal golf, golf but I'll take battle golf. Like, Nintendo absolutely. June 25th. Pre-orders are available now on Nintendo eShop. Oh shit, there's like 1,200 people here. Hello! Hi! <laughs> and another Monster Hunter Stories Welcome 2 trailer. <laughs> Someone in chat called it. <laughs> Absolutely called it. Capcom is pushing this game really hard. As a writer, like, holy shit. Adventure, you'll explore diverse and I can't say I blame them because it looks monster, great. Like, what we've seen of it looks fantastic. It looks like a great little RPG. Um, then use them to but yeah, Capcom is pushing it really hard. Beware of the mini monsters. Fucking Metroid, about. though. And they did, and, like, and someone else in chat had also predicted, like, that, that, that what we're gonna hear about Metroid 4 is, yeah, we're working on it. We're still developing it. But there had been a rumor about a new 2D Metroid. Like, it, but there'd been rumored. I was hoping. And yes. Fucking hell yes. I'm very satisfied now. Hey, is that an egg? I really, really, really. Want Incredibly a new 2D Metroid, and we're getting one, rare eggs. and it looks good. Need more I hope buddies? it doesn't take too much after Join Samus Returns, because like there were some things about that game that Buckle I found a little rider. bit. Eh. It's going to be a but, real monster of an adventure, mm, man. Monster 2D Metroid, man. Wings of Ruin yeah, yeah. And with Nintendo's that horror theme with robots and shit, that was cool. You can play the free demo on June 25th and carry over your save data to the full game. Yeah, like, there's Here's been a new, a new 2D Metroid rumor for, like, 15 years, but yeah. Certain company. Oh, WarioWare! <laughs> Did you miss me? Hey, what do you mean? Who am I? It's -a me, Wario! Hello, Charles Martin. It's finally ready. A brand new game from my company. Check it out. You get to control me. Time to do this. <laughs> Look at me go. Warrior Wear is fun. Black rats. Check out these chumps. They came back and they have wonderful new talents. Throw that stick thing. And the switch Not is like bad. the perfect platform. The, spinny, call it. Ha, nailed it. the switch is the perfect platform for Warrior Wear. I'm surprised it took this long. I almost forgot some big news. 
two people can play together at the same time. So play nice, or else. <laughs> eh? Not nice. All right, you. Yes, you. The one watching Wait, this. Wait, were you Better tweezing that guy's nipples? Micro game mayhem. <laughs> The WarioWare Get It Together game launches exclusively on the Nintendo Switch system September 10th. Yeah, WarioWare is just mini games. It's micro Nintendo games, actually. Shop. It's just a huge collection of micro games that you go through very quickly. And it's fun. It's, it's a great thing. The trailer for WarioWare Get It Together. In the latest installment of this series, there are new micro games that let you control Wario and his friends. There is also a two-player co-op mode, which greatly expands the gameplay. It's releasing in the near future, so stay tuned. Next, please take a look at this. What am I taking a look at? Wait, is that... Oh, Shin Megami Tensei! As a high school SMT. student living in Tokyo, your life is fairly normal. <laughs> yeah, normal. <laughs> I love the flower patterning and of those uniforms though. It looks nice. reality is upended after you get pulled into a different dimension. So Shin Megami Tensei is uh, like Persona, but more angsty. Um, it's where the Persona franchise came from, ultimately. Another Tokyo exists. A post-apocalyptic world where angels and demons reside. Suddenly, you fuse with a mysterious figure, gaining the power to fight demons. What lies ahead in this alternate realm? <laughs> But yeah, where Persona is all about style and stylishness, Shin Megami Tensei is much more sort of edgy in the ways that it's put together. Harness your newfound powers to fight demons using a command-based system. Finding their weak point is key. But as you can see, like the, the gameplay is, is very similar. Consecutive actions you can perform in a combo will increase. Though demons are formidable opponents. <laughs> you may be able to recruit them via negotiations, which begin when you open a conversation with them. If a negotiation is successful, a demon will become a powerful ally. In is it from the cases, same makers as Persona? Yeah. A uh, Persona and Shin Megami Tensei take place in the same universe, basically. Well, sort of, kind of. It, it's unclear. But broadly demons speaking. That do join will fight alongside it's, you it's basically stronger. like it's like Final Fantasy games, the way that they all have the same monsters. By yeah, it's the same thing with, the, allies, with Persona and Shin Megami Tensei. Can be created. So you have a lot of the same mechanics where like you fuse together monsters, you have the same mechanics in terms of like use, uh, exploiting weaknesses. Um, but Shin Megami Tensei tends to be less focused on, like, it's not a school life simulator in the same way. Persona games uh, have this whole school life sort of uh, visual novel sim thing going on as well. Shin Megami Tensei games usually don't have that. What destiny will you choose? So Shin Megami Tensei, like, think of that as the more traditional RPG version of, like, the Persona games. Pre-orders for the physical version begin June 21st. I'm making eggs? How should I make them? Sunny side up, obviously. That was the latest trailer for Shin Megami Tensei 5 from Atlas. This is the newest game in the series. But yeah, if you want a fucking long things. RPG to sink your teeth into, Shin Let's Megami Tensei is a good place Nintendo to go. Switch headlines. Celebrate 10 years oh, of Duncan, Duncan Rumpa, Rumpa, huh? In despair. I should play those games. Ahem, ahem, testing, testing. Mic check, one, two. This is a test of the school broadcast system. Decadence. Ah, right, because decade. Three games in the deadly uh... Duncan Rumpa series are coming to Nintendo Switch. I am this school 
Monokuma, the self-proclaimed school headmaster, has trapped you and other high school students in a game of literal life and death. Unfortunately, the only way out of the school and this lethal game is to betray the other students. And so it begins. A body has been discovered! When a student meets their demise, a class trial will take place to reveal the culprit. You're the culprit, aren't you, Mew? Tony, I had no idea. They probably moved the body there. Use the so think of it like even edgier, even more anime Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Are you okay? Hello, Komeda. There's a lot of horny fan art of you for some reason. The board game from Donkin Rampa V3 Killing Harmony has been expanded into a standalone game. Donkin Rampa S Ultimate Summer Camp. An all star cast of characters from the Donkin Rampa series will come together to battle at a tropical resort. Who's the strongest of them all in this hey. ultimate beach brawl? The four-game collection Duncan Rampa Decadence. Yeah, never played Duncan Rampa, so Nintendo Switch later this year. I don't have a lot of connection All four to games it. Games will also be individually available on Nintendo eShop. Ooh, is we that what I think? You're not afraid of ghosts. Fatal Frame, Maiden of Blackwater. Hey, that's nice. That game, like that game, deserves more love. In this horror adventure game, you'll uncover the mysteries surrounding the ethereal but deadly Mount Hikami, believed to be at the center of many disappearances. Ghosts frequent this mountain. Your only defense is a camera that can repel and cast them out. Face your fears as you explore a variety of unsettling locations. This spine-chilling story features various protagonists, letting you experience the game from different perspectives. New costumes and photo modes are included in this version. Can you investigate Mount Hikami and stay alive? Fatal Frame, Maiden of Black Water, creeps onto Nintendo Switch this year. Cool. It's glad, I'm glad to see the Fatal Frame franchise getting a little DLC love. Are coming soon. Some even today. Oh, hello, Doom. Mm. Your war is not over. Raise hell in the first campaign expansion for Doom Eternal, The Ancient Gods Part 1. Deeper and more challenging combat awaits as you eliminate hell's newest threats in demon-infested ruins and rain-swept terrain. The fate of the cosmos sure, that's is cool. in your uh, hands. I don't know. I, I never, I mean, never finished Doom Eternal, so. Expansion yeah. launches on Nintendo Switch later it's today. still cool that they managed to get it running on Switch somehow. Get ramped up for two iconic and there's Pro Skater. Yep, makes sense. In HD. Skate to era-defining jams as the legendary Tony Hawk and a roster of new and returning pros. Take your sessions okay, I don't think that music is going to get me copyright claimed. <laughs> I don't think so. Online ...to show off your tricks against other skaters. Drop in to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, launching on Nintendo Switch June 25th. I used to Free play so much fucking Tony Hawk Pro Skater on, on PS1 eShop. back in the day. After 4,000 years, Sateki, the Witch Queen, has risen from the dead, and only one group of heroes can stop her. The Strange Brigade. What? In this thrilling adventure, you'll blast through an army of mummified monstrosities while solving puzzles in booby-trapped dungeons. Go it alone or team up with other daring adventurers in local what the wireless co-op and I've online I've never play. heard of this. Expect the unexpected. Well, okay, Strange then. Brigade launches on Nintendo Switch later today. All right. Sure. It's a new adventure. Right, so there's the new Mario Rabbits that was leaked by Nintendo themselves, poor fools. Mario and his friends will team up with the Rabbits once again to restore order to the galaxy. Our heroes must stop a mysterious. <sighs> I liked the first Mario and Rabbits, but Ubisoft chaos. can go fuck themselves. Like Ubisoft can just fuck off. So Rabbit Rosalina fuck them. joins them. Wait, is she bored already? Explore planets filled with quirky residents and even quirkier secrets. And in this fresh take on the tactical genre, our heroes can run freely around the battlefield, creating new strategic and chaotic possibilities. How did they get leaked? So they accidentally victory. put up the eShop uh, listing for it too early. Who's that? Well, one thing's certain. This is going to be one heck of a galactic adventure. 
Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope launches into space or onto Nintendo Switch next year. <gasps> oh, really? Really? Okay. Advance Wars back. Oh, and they're going for a... Ah. Okay, cool. Cool. That's cute. Well, shit. I never thought we'd see Advance Wars again. But I guess it's a remaster of the originals. Yeah. Cool. Like, oh, shit. Fuck. Yeah, I'll play that. I'll fucking play that. Advance, advance, ad, advance Wars rules. Like, if you're into Fire Emblem, you can have a lot of fun with Advance Wars. Thrilling stories, memorable characters, and vibrant gameplay are in store as you lead the commanding officers to victory. Play the first two Advance Wars campaigns in Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Marching on to Nintendo Switch this holiday. I never thought we'd see anything from Advance Wars again. On Nintendo eShop. How is everything? All right, this next segment will be our last announcement of the day. Please take a look. There we go. Oh, no, wait, that's a uh, Age of Calamity. Really? That's the only thing you're showing? Okay, fuck you then. Oh my god, playable guardian. Okay, fine. That is pretty cool. I really like Age of Calamity. I, I Age of Calamity is is hands down the best. Um, like it's the best Warriors game that I think has ever been made for the franchise. Oh my god! <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> Yeah! Zelda on a motorcycle! <laughs> okay. I... Yeah, thank you. Right. Konnichiwa. What's up with Hello Breath of the there. Wild 2? I'm Eiji Aonuma, producer of the Legend of Zelda series. What you've just seen is a trailer for the first wave of DLC for the Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity expansion pass from Koei Tecmo Games. It will follow Link and his allies through more battles that took place 100 years prior to the events of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I okay, hope you look forward to it. Breath of the Wild 2? I have a few more things to share with you yes. all today. We'll begin with The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD game, ah! which launches next no! month. No! Breath of the Wild 2, you jerk! You'll immerse yourself in the role of Link by using two Joy-Con controllers for intuitive motion controls or by playing in handheld mode, wielding the sword via flicking the stick and button-only controls. This game depicts the oldest era in the Legend of Zelda series, the story of how it all began. I'm happy that Skyward Sword HD what exists, is the mind origin you. Of the Master Sword? Why did a woman named Zelda become the legend for future generations? These will all be unraveled in this game. We hope you're looking forward to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword You better Sword show me not more Breath of the Wild 2. Like, just give me, like, at least tell me qu third quarter 2023 or whatever. Next up. AG! Here's a little something you might like. This is a Game & Watch system that lets you play three games in The Legend of Zelda series. This year, the original Legend of Zelda game reaches its 35th anniversary. Well, we don't have any campaigns or uh, Nintendo Switch games. That thing it. is going to be sold out like We've been working on that. This game it's just going to be gone. You're not going to be able to buy it. Mark the occasion and and we know this because that's what happened with the, the, like, the, the, SNE, the NES Mini, the SNES Mini, and the last time they did it one of those, which was for Mario. The first game in the series, The Legend of Zelda. Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be $60 as uh, and a MSRP of the and then it's going to be $250 on eBay afterwards. As well as a special version of the Game & Watch title Vermin, starring Link as the playable character. So that's four games on one system, from longer Legend of Zelda games to the pick-up-and-play game Vermin. 
addition, they're good games. Regarding like, the watch functionality for the Game & Watch system, ugh. we've added a playable clock based on The Legend of Zelda and an interactive timer themed after Zelda II, The Adventure of Link. You can play with both of them by taking control of Link. We hope you'll enjoy playing cool. this Game & Watch system. That's cool. Breath of the Wild 2 now, like. please? Breath of the Wild 2 now, please. AG? All right. Here's the last thing we have to show you. This is the sequel to The Legend of yes! Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yes. Two yes, years yes, yes. have passed give me, give me, give me, give me, since we first announced this game, and we've been unable to share anything with you in that time. However, development has been steadily progressing. For today, we've prepared some new footage to show a bit more of the game. Please take a look. Give me, 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 give me. Okay, 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 okay. Ooh. Gameplay footage, please. Hey, it's Dry Ganon. Wait. Wow. What? No, 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 Is this time travel? Is that what you guys are doing? <laughs> but see, that's Hyrule Castle still. I was hoping they'd show playable Zelda, but yeah. Fucking okay, I'm gonna rewatch this trailer like 150 times. 2022. Fair enough. Presumably that'll be after the launch of the Switch Pro. We finally have a release date-ish. So, what did you think? This time around, the setting for the adventure has been expanded to include the skies above Hyrule. We'd like to ask you to wait a bit longer. We're aiming for a 2022 release, so I hope you'll look forward to it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. How was that? Yes, yes. That's yes, I will. That's all for this Nintendo Direct. Oh, thank you, Paige, Marianne. We are diligently continuing development on a number of other games we didn't show today. So they're bringing I in Skyloft. Old Skyloft inspiration, in anyway. On Nintendo Switch. Thank you for watching. Thank you for finally giving me the one thing I wanted, which was Breath of the Wild 2 news. Okay. Uh. Let's just, let's just, uh. Let's you. just go back a sec here. This is the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Two years have passed Let's since just, we first I, I want to read chat. Uh, I want to talk to chat and everything, but, 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 but. However, development has been steadily progressing. For today, we've prepared some new footage to show a bit more of the game. Please take a look. So, something miserable happens to Link's arm. Dry Ganon does a thing. And Zelda gets thrown... somewhere. And Link's arm is weird. Like, he, I don't think he's lost it, but it's definitely had something done to it. And so what it looks like is, yeah, the, it's like the ruins of Skyloft. But that right there, like that, this is definitely on the ground in Hyrule. Like this is this is the ground level in Hyrule. This is back down where like Breath of the Wild One took place. Yeah, it's it's not that his arm is lost, it's that it's been had something grafted onto it. Like that. Some kind of magical gondola. And presumably that glove will be the thing that allows Link to access the sky area. Because that right there is definitely Skyloft. Like, that'll, that'll be Link. 
making his way from somewhere way high up down to Skyloft. Cool clothes, too. Like, I like the aesthetic. Sort of vaguely sort of Greek, ancient Greek-inspired look going on there. New costumes and outfits, obviously. And the visual style has shifted. Link's hair has gotten way longer, which I like. So it can blow in the breeze. Man, that's pretty. But the way you can tell the difference between, like, the, the sky area and the, and the regular ground area is you can look at the light. Um, up in the sky, the light seems to be more golden. Also, that talus with, like, the camp on top of it, that's so fucking cool. So, new rune powers. Okay, so what it looks like to me there is that Link's rune powers are no longer tied to the Sheikah Slates. He just does that with his arm. Like, the new arm thing is going to be the thing that gives him new rune powers with which to interact with stuff. And he has a flamethrower, also. That's a weapon you can have a flamethrower. And droplets of water flowing backwards. And then just straight up diving through some rock. Just like, boink! So I think what we're seeing there, this is Link going from Hyrule itself to the sky. Like, I think that's the ability we saw, is him being able to dive into the sky. Or something along those lines. But the other thing I note, listen to the, if you listen to the music here. There, that backwards, like, that, that odd-sounding stuff. Is it just me, or does that sound a little bit like Midna's language? Like the, the Twilight language from uh, Twilight Princess? Like, it's, it's that reverse sound thing that they did with her speech as well. And what's interesting is, if you look at Link here, it looks like his arm is fine? No. No, it's just a glove. But there is a difference visually between Link when, when he seems to be on the ground and when he seems to be in the sky. Hmm, I need to take a closer look at that. Like, and, and Breath of the Wild, in terms of its timeline, um, where it's placed, but like, you look at the light here, that's, that's, Light, the lighting thing is similar to that of the Twilight Realm from Twilight Princess. And what Breath of the Wild, the original, was... Um, like, it, what they did with the timeline there was they said, this is set so far in the future that all the previous timelines have been merged back together. So, like, you heard about, like, both the Great Sea and, like, the, 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 the Twilight Realm and, and the Hero of Time. And, like, all the timelines on Zelda have been merged back together. And there were sort of hints towards every single game in the previous timeline in the franchise in Breath of the Wild itself. And so what I'm thinking here is that this is the game where they bring in, it, like, they're bringing in influences, obviously, from Skyward Sword, with the whole, you can literally go to Skyloft here, essentially. Um, they're bringing references to Skyward Sword. They're bringing in references to, to uh, Twilight Princess. Um, like, bringing sort of the visual references to those things. I don't think we're going to see Midna or anything, but it's, it's fun to see them sort of draw back from the history of the franchise. And then there we have Hyrule Castle being raised up on a thing. What would annoy me a lot, what I really, what would really kind of bother the hell out of me is if Zelda is now trapped inside of Hyrule Castle and you have to go save her again. That would that would annoy me. I would rather they didn't do that because we just got like we just got done saving Zelda in Breath of the Wild One. N let her be a character this time. Let her be playable. Let her do stuff, not just sit around and wait for Link. Please, 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 please. Like Nintendo, you know we have told you very, very strongly that we would like Zelda not to be a damsel in distress anymore. And, like, you gave us that, like, in if you really want playable Zelda, if you want a really good Zelda game that's actually focused on Zelda and her story, that's what Age of Calamity is. Age of Calamity is a fantastic... 
fantastic Zelda story because it focuses on her. It focuses on her like uh, emotional experiences, her growth, and she's the central hero of that story, which is what makes Age of Calamity so good. Well, it's one of the things um, in terms of a story. You've already, you've already, like, you already know that, like, it's a good, good idea to make Zelda, like, you have a good version of her here. Everyone likes this version of Zelda, like this, like, the shy, awkward nerd girl who has trouble finding herself, who comes into her own, it's like, so, this is playable, make, let, let her at least not be trapped, some damsel in distress bullshit garden, it's just, hmm, she doesn't have to, like, if you don't want to let her be in the overworld swinging around swords, fine, whatever, but at least let her do some dungeon stuff, like dungeon crawling or solving puzzles or something, like, yeah, because I, I don't want to have to go and rescue Zelda again. To show a bit more of the game, please take a look. So, Link and Zelda are exploring under, underneath Hyrule, some caverns or something. There they find what seems to be the corpse of Ganondorf, which seems to be still animated. Like, that's not, this stuff right there, this goop, that's not the same stuff as the Calamity. Like, it's, it's, it's similar, but it's not quite the same thing, visually. Which might just be an aesthetic change, obviously, because there'll be Calamity energy or whatever. Zelda falls deep down into deep Hyrule. So, what it, my hope here, my hope here is that Zelda falls into some deep caverns and she's doing archaeology stuff. Like, she's splunking, like, you'll get playable sections with her where she does, like, puzzle solving or figures out some history about the game, uh, about the world or something. Like, where she does, like, a, a intellectual nerd shit. Because she's the wisdom girl, right? Like, she, she's, she has the Triforce of Wisdom. She's doing archaeology deep under the earth. And then, as a contrast to that, Link, being Mr. Captain Courage, um, jumps up into the sky and does, you know... Fuck, it's gorgeous, though. Look at that. Like, look how pretty that is. Man, it's pretty. So, that looks like some kind of... This would be the new Guardians, then? Like, whatever the heck that thing is would be a new Guardian of some sort. So, they have the Sheikah Eye design on them, if you look at, like, here, but it's upside down. Which I'm not familiar enough with all of Zelda's iconography to understand fully what that means. But, like, this thing, too. Like, you look at the hand designs on this thing. Like, everything about the aesthetic of this thing reminds me of Twilight Princess. Like, I've, I've, especially with the hands and shit. Like, I get a lot of sort of Twilight Princess vibes from the aesthetic of this thing. Which, again, I think it's, it's not that they're bringing back Twilight Princess or anything, but that you're sort of getting... A bit of that, that, that mood. And then let's see if we can't get a closer look at Link's arm here. Because, because I think, like here he's wearing gloves, right? Here we are in the normal Hyrule rule world. We're down on the ground in Hyrule proper. You can see Death Mountain over there. You can see, uh, like, landmarks that you recognize from Breath of the Wild 1. And his, his hair is tied up in a ponytail, like it usually is in Breath of the Wild 1. And his arm seems okay. And here we are down in, on the ground in Hyrule again, because... Yeah, because again, ponytail link. And the thing I can't... You want to know my crazy conspiracy theory? You want to know my nutty, nutty, crazy conspiracy theory? Two links. Two links. Two different links. Like, I think they're two different characters. And I don't know if it's time travel shenanigans, but, like, Zelda 
franchise is not any stranger to time travel shenanigans. I don't know if it's like dimension warp or alternate dimension or something, but I think there's going to be two links here. And I don't think it's impossible. Like, I don't think it's likely. But I don't think it's pos impossible. It's not impossible that N Nintendo are pulling a fast one on us, and this is actually Zelda. Like, it's not impossible. Like, because what we see is, right, what we see time. here. However, development has been steadily progressing. For today, we've prepared some new footage to show a bit more of the game. Please take a look. Because what we see here is, like, some stuff happens to Link, right? And that's the thing is, like, it clearly his his arm is the one that's getting fucked up here, right? So surely, so surely the, char the Link character with the fucked up arm must be this one, right? But if you wanted to be crazy, if you wanted to, like, go conspiracy theory full tinfoil hat, lunatic person what happens here is that zelda falls right she falls she falls away she falls down deep and then everything goes dark and then it goes light boom and then we show a character falling right so zelda falls and then we cut and then there's a character falling whose face we never get to see who has different hair than link like i think their hair is a more pale yellow than than uh, Breath of the Wild Lynx is. He's more of a dirty blonde. But still, like, it's Link's arm that gets fucked up, right? Like, it's Link's arm is the one that gets fucked up and gets the weird stuff on it, so it must be him, but, you know, it, it could be. They never show the face of this one. It could be. They never show the front. We don't get to see if there's, like... I don't think so. I don't actually think so, at all, but, but I mean, it would be nice. Wouldn't it be nice? It would be nice. But yeah, I think it's just two different links. Like, I think it's some kind of time travel or dimension travel shenanigans that are going on, where, like, you have two different link characters, essentially. One that messes around in the Skyloft area, and one that messes around in the regular Breath of the Wild. Um... If you wanted to be tinfoil hat, like maybe, maybe, could be, could be, but 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 probably not. Like I want to believe, but I don't. <laughs> Two different links. You're implying it'll be a gotcha game? Oh no. Don't give them ideas. But, like, in terms of the character design of the two Links, like, of, of the two different Link uh, versions we see, like, the one with the hair down and the one with the hair up. And then, like, when we see the, the Skyloft Link here, we always get to see the arm. Like, we always get to see the fucked up arm that they've got. Um, like, no matter what kind of, what kind of um, costume they're, they're otherwise wearing. Right? Like, here, like, he's wearing a different outfit, but you can still see the arm. Whereas with with Ground Link, <laughs> whatever the case may be there, Ground Link just seems to be wearing normal clothes. Like, they, they there doesn't seem to be anything preventing them from putting on normal gloves or normal shirts. Um, and I don't know if that's because they have to hide their fucked up arm. What's that in the background? Like, I don't know if it's because they have to hide their fucked up arm, because as you can see there, like, I don't think they have the Sheikah Slate, but they can still use, like, they, I don't think they pull the Sheikah Slate off their hip the way that they usually do in, in Breath of the Wild 1. No, it's just the arm just activates. So presumably this is the same link somehow. They're just hiding their fucked up arm because of reasons. Because, like, um, because it certainly looks the way that, uh, and I'm just going to be stuck on this, by the way. If you if you want anything else to happen this stream, you're not going to see it. Um, what we see here is if you take a look at, like, Link's shoulder and, like, their upper body, you can see it's almost like it's a corruption, right? It's like a corruption that kind of spreads. But this gauntlet here, like, this sort of blackened, messed up arm... That is that the same as what we see with 
like what we see with the arm as we get to the shot of the arm lying on the ground. No, that's not the same. That's not quite the same, is it? Like, that doesn't look the same as the corrupted arm, I don't think. Like, that looks like something else. And those long-ass fingernails... Yeah, as people are pointing out in, in chat, those long-ass fingernails, that's not really Link style, is it? So that would be either Zelda's arm or Ganon's arm. Because, like, those long fingernails doesn't seem like something Link would have. So this would be dehydrated Ganon, maybe? But that wouldn't make sense, because what we see with dehydrated Ganon, the first trailer for Breath of the Wild 2... What we see is, like, this arm, an arm that looks a lot like that, is the thing that's holding him in place. Like, that's the thing that's, that's holding on to him and sealing him away. Zelda's thighs in the upper right corner. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, this looks like someone's leg. Um, and I don't think it's Link, because, like, Link wears pants. <laughs> or rather, he does in the original trailer for Breath of the Wild. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2. But Zelda wears pants too, so it kind of can't be her. <laughs> the pantsless Link conspiracy. I mean, yeah, if there's two Links, if it is a thing where there's two different Links, and the arm is some kind of conduit between the two different versions of the world, um, then it might be that there's two Zeldas as well. Because the thing is, like, that hair there, like, that could just be Link without the, um, like, without the, uh, hair tie that he's got otherwise. But that's also, like, that's also long, that, that hair is long enough to be Zelda's. It's not gonna be her. It's not gonna be her. Stop, stop hyping yourself up, Sky, and it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna be her. It's not gonna happen. But yeah, I, I do believe in a two Link's theory. I do, be I do believe in a two links theory. I do believe it's it's two different links somehow. Whether they're separated by time or dimensions or... Like, I don't think it's going to be contiguous of... Like, I, I don't think it's it's going to be contiguous in, in... In terms of... Like, I think, it, I think it's going to be two different timelines, two different dimensions, two different something-something. Because otherwise, the difference in character design doesn't make sense to me. Like, there has to be some kind of time skip or some kind of difference in something to make that character design change make sense. Like I, yeah, like I said, chat, like, if the idea that it's Zelda is a complete conspiracy theory. Like, that's, that's complete tinfoil hat. Like, that's more desire than truth. Uh, that That's more what you want than what's actually real. But I want it so bad, though. I really do want it so bad. I want at least Zelda... I want at least Zelda to be... Like, an active character in the story. Like, even if she's not playable or whatever. I just don't want her to be sitting around waiting for Link this time. I want her to do something. I want to have, like... Cut scenes where you cut to what Zelda is doing and she's doing stuff. Like she's exploring ruins or... Or something or other. Uh, I just don't want her to be sitting around to be, waiting to be saved. So, let's look at Hyrule. Because it looks much the same as it did. Like, it, it doesn't look like they've made major changes to the overworld of Hyrule itself. Like, I think the Breath of the Wild map, insofar as... I don't know how much of it is going to be explorable, but what it, however much of it is going to be explorable, it doesn't look like they've made huge changes. Like, this looks like the surroundings of Hyrule Castle to me with the same ruins. Like, you can see the castle town and the parapets, and they're still ruined and broken down. And, like, it's not like this. the, the town has been rebuilt in there or anything. 
So I don't think the Breath of the Wild world itself is going to be changed that much. So all the new exploration focus is going to be on the Sky World. Yeah, it's just like, because looking at it, the arm, like the way that the arm is fucked up, I feel like Link wouldn't be able to just wear gloves over that. So I think it is two different timeline links or two different versions of them or something. Like, there's going to be some significant difference between Sky Link and Ground Link. Maybe they're the same character, but they just have to transform somehow to go to the other place. I don't know. Oh, I want to know more. Eiji Aonuma, I want to know more. You need to give me more trailers for this. Ah, I want it. I want it so bad. And by the way, that shit is fucking cool. Like a talus with like a, a Bokoblin encampment. And the Bokoblins here are weird because they have Moblin horns. Like those are Moblin horns or Lysalfos horns or something. So why are they wearing those? But, but that shit right there, that's going to be fun to fight. That's going to be very fucking fun to fight. Um, it's probably a time skip. Yeah, it could be a time skip. Like, it could be. But, like, that's definitely not Link's arm. Like, that right there. Whatever that is, that's not Link's arm. Like, definitely not Link's arm. Because he doesn't have fingernails like that. And that doesn't look like the same stuff that's on his corrupted arm, either. But we do see, in terms of, of like, changes, like, it, this looks like a time reversal thing to me, you see. Because, uh, like, that ability he uses there, what happens is that there's a, there's like a, uh, there's like a, a metal ball rolling towards him, right? And then what Link does, like, look at that. Like, there's just one metal spike ball rolling towards him. Then he does this. Boom. And then we get these after images. And the ball reverses course. Like, this to me looks like a time warp thing. Right? Like, that's definitely a time thing where you can get the ball to roll backwards along the path that it came from. To reverse time on the thing. And if you have a time reversal power in your arm... That kind of, to me, says some kind of time travel. So that maybe, 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 maybe... It's a thing of, like, when you go to the Sky World, you're traveling back in time to the time of Skyloft, like, to the very early days of Hyrule. And that's why the change? Like, that's why he looks... That's why he looks different or weird? Because that was definitely a time manipulation power right there. Yeah, it could be. It could. That's actually a good point. Uh, Parasite Seven. It could be a thing about warping between timelines. Like it could be that he he's able to jump into the Skyward Sword timeline, or like jump into the an alternate timeline for Hyrule that didn't lead to the original Breath of the Wild. Who knows? Because if that's if that's the case, if it's like some kind of time warp or something, then I don't think the the Hyrule that we're seeing down here. I don't think that this ground down here, because I don't recognize... Oh, no, wait, yes, it is. I recognize those, those mushroom towers. That's definitely part of the original Breath of the Wild Hyrule. But if there is some kind of time warping power, or some kind of time travel thing going on with the arm, then th like, then I think the thing, is, the thing you're going to be doing is, if there's time travel, I think what's going to happen is that you're going to go to the past, presumably up here, with the arm. Like, that'll take you to the past... And in here, you can do stuff and manipulate, like, you can manipulate the environment, you can make an island fall down, whatever, and that will create new ground in the present for Link to run around. Like, that, some, you can do stuff in the past that changes the present of Hyrule, and that will allow you to, like, explore new places in present-day Hyrule, something along those lines. Isn't Breath of the Wild at the end of all three timelines? Yeah, but, like... Timelines in Legend of Zelda are whatever the hell Nintendo decide that they are. Like, I would, I would, like, they, they, they don't care that much about their own timelines being consistent.
but like if there is a time warping power and there seems to be that with the arm like it has some kind of power to to reverse time when he's using it on that spike ball then this would be the past and you do stuff in the past that affects the map in the in the present which will allow link to something something who knows But I don't think you're going to be reversing the Calamity entirely. Like, I don't think that's going to be the story, but... Yeah, there's some cool shit. I'm also not 100% sure that, like... That the dry corpse that they found was Ganon, necessarily. Ganondorf. It probably is. Like, with the red hair, it's, it's almost certainly Ganondorf. But it's not necessarily him. Still don't see Groundlink having that arm, though. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing I'm, I'm thinking, too, is, like... When you look at the character design for Ground Link, like, because this Link, like, clearly the fucked up arm is, like, bulky. Like, it would prevent them from putting on normal gloves. Like, it's got some shit going on, but I don't see that on Ground Link. Like, I don't see any indication that, like, they're covering up the arm with the gloves. Like, you'd expect it to be bulges or something. Like, I don't know. That's the thing I'm stuck on is the difference in character design between the two. and why that's there. Because again, what we also saw here, right? Like this this right here is a droplet of water flowing backwards, which again tells me time manipulation. Like something's going on with timelines or with time powers, reversing time, something, something, something. I checked in the first trailer, the pants worn by the person getting the arm thing. Okay, let me just find the first Breath of the Wild trailer. The first one from way back in. Because here's the arm, right? Like, that's the arm we saw in the... in the trailer. And that's the thing that's holding Ganon down. Or Ganondorf. Presumably Ganondorf more than Ganon. And here we can also hear that backwards... Like, that reversed music. And again, the reverse music thing... That, to me, also says time travel. Like, if, if they're playing the music backwards, that's like, oh, it's like you're rewinding the music. So that's that says some kind of time travel thing to me. Oh, poor baby. But that is Ganondorf. It has to be. But there it is. Like, there is the arm. Um, so maybe the thing we see in the other Breath of the Wild trailer, in, in, the, in the new trailer, is more like... Let's see. Okay, it's impossible to find specifically. We'll just have to go and... Because, like, it doesn't seem to be disconnected, right? Like, it doesn't seem to be a disconnected arm. It doesn't seem to be just an arm that's lying on the ground. But that is that arm. Like, that's the one. And, like, that's there, right? Like, that's Link getting his arm... Something, something, like something gets fucked up or whatever. Something happens to his right arm. And then that's Zelda reaching up for Link's hand. And that's, like, that's, that's, that's Link falling down, right? I'm pretty sure. And there's the special magic arm grabbing his hand. And holding on to him. Hmm. Mysteries. Mysteries! 
but I'm just so happy. Um, I'm just so happy that we finally got Breath of the Wild 2 footage. I'm just so happy. Finally, like, oh, I'm, I'm excited. 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 Uh, anyway, hi, hi, how are you doing? How y'all, I've barely talked to chat this entire stream, uh, because I've been too focused on looking at the games. So, um, in the trailer, OG Link has white pants. In the trailer, the arm is on a person with dark pants. Yeah. I wonder about that. But yeah, we got 2D Metroid. We got confirmation that Metroid Prime 4 is still in development. And we got Breath of the Wild 2 trailer. So that rules. I'm perfectly happy with this direct. Like, I'm perfectly happy with it. No new Pokemon. Nope. No Silk Song. No Pokemon. None of that. I'm I, my my feeling is that Nintendo is planning to do more directs, like leading up to Christmas, something in the in like the um something in the fall. Probably they'll do a direct talking more specifically about their exclusives. Can we trust that the first teaser still counts? No, not necessarily. That's the other thing. Um, and, and you're right about that, Nixorian UA. Um, like, the first Breath of the Wild 2 teaser, like, how canon is it? It was two years ago. How much has the story changed? How much has things changed? We don't know. Um, but what's consistent across both of them is the arm. So... The symbol on the g altar Ganondorf is on a similar alternate link shield... The symbol on Ganon's arm is, uh, what is it? Is this one. And that's the Gerudo symbol. Uh, that's the symbol that's on Ganon's table thing, whatever. Um, and I don't think we saw that on Link's shield. Did they upload the trailer standalone yet? Is the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer standalone? I need to, I need, I'm still, I'm not done. I'm still gonna, yes, there it is. I am not done. I'm still going, and this should be, make it a lot easier to find specific things. Because again, uh, it's Link's arm getting fucked up here, right? And I wonder why it gets fucked up. Like, what does he do that gets him into contact with the evil goop? Because in the original trailer, we saw Link's arm get green. Like, some green stuff happened to it. And here, with the dried up old Ganondorf here, Litchy boy. It's so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, because that is the same arm. And, like, Breath of the Wild Link wears earrings, right? No, he doesn't. Doesn't he? No. Because this character has an earring. And I don't believe Zelda wears earrings either. Oh yeah, no, 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 Breath of the Wild Link does wear earrings, he does. 
It's just you can't see him on his character model usually. So that will be Link. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know it's Link. It has to be Link. Of course it's Link. Of course it is. Don't get excited, you dumb idiot. I really want... <laughs> you can tell I want playable Zelda, right? <laughs> I know it's not gonna happen. I know. I know. I know it's not gonna happen, but I want it anyway. That's really long hair, too. Which again makes me think of, like, that there's some kind of time skip thing. Because the ha the length of Link's hair changes, but it doesn't, though. Like, the only thing that changes is he doesn't have a hair tie anymore. Hmm. But yeah, I think what we've established is time travel shenanigans... ...and some kind of, like, shifting dynamic where you go from the Skyloft area to... ...to regular Hyrule. Gender non-conforming as fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good point, Eric Long. Like, that there is a... In Breath of the Wild 1, like, they talk so much about, like, the, the, the original... Like, when they were preparing for the return of Ganon for the first time, when they created the Guardians, when they created the Divine Beasts and all that. Um that there was a Link and Zelda at that time trying to prepare Hyrule for the coming of Ganondorf, and they managed to do it, too. Like, they managed to use the, the Guardians and the technology to beat him back, and then in Breath of the Wild, like, they were trying to do that thing again, but this time Ganon was ready for it. And the idea that it's, like, we go back to the 10,000 years ago bit of Hyrule, when, when they're first starting to develop Guardian technology to... Like, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I could see this being like 10,000 years ago, Hyrule. Because that would explain the change in fashion, right? That would explain why Link is dressed so differently, why he's got these sort of ancient Greek-looking sandal thing going on, when in normal Hyrule he's wearing boots, like leather boots and, like, and shit, why this style is so different. And like this, but this is definitely present day timeline Hyrule. You can see the ruins. Like you can see, I think that's a shrine over there actually. Um, you, you can see normal Hyrule shit. So the, the big horns on these little moblins, that's not because they're prehistoric. Like it's not, that's not because they're 10,000 years ago Bacoblins. I don't believe that. Because that's still like, that's still Death Mountain and like you can still see Like those are the those are the mountains around Kakariko Village over there, and if we have just enough time, we might be able to see. Yeah, you can see there the the shattered Twin Peaks bit that you ride through at the start of Breath of the Wild One when you're going to Kakariko Village. That's still there as well. So like the, here, all of the landscape is the same. So this won't be ten thousand years ago. Is Ganon wearing Roman Greek-like clothes as well? That's a good point. Let's see if we can't find him. He's here somewhere. There you go. How you doing? I mean, it's hard to tell anything about his fashion, but... But the thing I do note is... Like, the cloth over the shoulder, right? Like, he's got the cloth over the shoulder and then the other shoulder free. The right shoulder free. And that is exactly the same fashion cloth over the shoulder and then the other side free. Uh, that's the same style as this link right here. Hang on. Wait. Hang on. No. No, 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 no. No. But, no. But, mm. No. No. No, 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 no. No. But, But, but I mean, no, though. 
Like that. What if? What if Krusty McCrusterson here? Like it's the same fashion. What if that's who that is? What if, if there's time travel shenanigans, right? What if the person we're traveling back in time, like, to see what happens to them? What if this is a link that gets corrupted by Ganon? And the thing that we see here, like, the, the corpse that they find, is the hero of 10,000 years ago. who's being sealed underneath. Because, like... Because I could see that... Because the arm is corruption, right? Like, the arm is clearly corruption that's spreading over their body and taking over. I could see the idea that this is, like, the spirit of Ganon that has infected their arm after they beat him if, or something. And that this is a link that's looking for some kind of way to, to seal themselves away or prevent Ganon from taking them over. Um, and like, once he's fully corrupted, that's when the red hair comes in. That's when, like, that's when he becomes fully ganonized. I mean... I could see that. Like, I could see the idea that he's slowly transforming into Ganon, and, like, he, he'll eventually get the red hair and, and shit. I could see that. In Impa's Tapestry, the hero has red hair. That's true as well. Let me see if I can find a... Hang on, just a sec. I found a high-quality image of it. That's the link of 10,000 years ago. And, I mean, I don't know how much stock we should put in the colors, but he does have red hair. He does have red hair there. I mean, <laughs> it's a tinfoil hat thing. And, oh, and so someone points out, this cloth seems to be more green than blue. Yeah. It's a tinfoil hat thing, but... But, I mean, what if the hero of 10,000 years ago... <laughs> what if? It could be. It's not impossible. I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them to do something like that. Like again, that's the thing is like I don't think we can put too much stock in the colors there because it the the aesthetic of the tapestry. Um the aesthetic of the tapestry is that they're, they're just using like colors to show the character, but it's not necessarily the same thing as the colors being accurate to the person. But I mean it's not <laughs> It's not impossible that this Link hero of 10,000 years ago could be a Ganondorf. Like, uh, it's not impossible. It's silly, but... But... <laughs> no, no, the old hero is also wearing an earring, uh, which, is a, which is a thing that Link has done in, in his character design for ages. Like, Link has had an earring on his, on his right ear since Ocarina of Time, at least. Like, that's been part of his character design. But, like, I could see a possession thing. Like, I could see that this corruption stuff is, like, like Ganon trying to possess Link's body or something. And, like, our present-day Link has had his arm corrupted as well. And this is, like, past Link that's being taken over by Ganon trying to find a way to... Trying to find a way to escape from it and failing. But we get to see that as flashbacks, playable flashbacks that Link then learns from in order to learn how to get rid of the corruption in the present day. Like, I could see that. The raised islands have roads on them. Yeah, I see that. There's paths. <laughs> okay. We, we found some crazy shit here. 
that's probably not true, but it would be very cool if it was. It would be very cool if it was. Because there's definitely time travel. Like, we've established that there has to be some kind of time travel shenanigans going on. So anything is possible. Like, when, when the Zelda franchise goes into time travel shenanigans, anything is possible. Oh. I'm excited. Like, I just want to play it, man. I don't, I, I don't even care about all this that much. I just want to play it. I just want I just want to play the goddamn video game. I just want to go back to the world of Breath of the Wild and like kick some pacoblins in the face. Hey, wait a minute. Did the moblin also have a different uh horn? It did. That's a different that's a different horn on the moblin. Is it wearing a helmet? I think it's wearing a little hat. Look at that. The moblin's wearing a little hat. It's wearing a helmet. It's got like a or it's got some kind of bony crown on the set. No, it's a hat. Like, you can see one up there as well. Like, it's, it's wearing a thing on his head, like a little hat. I mean, one explanation for the difference... Um, one explanation for the difference in the characters on the Moblins and Bokoblins is, like, the Moblins and Bokoblins in Hyrule before were all created by like the Blood Moon and like the power of Calamity Gan. And now that he's gone, maybe like these, these are more natural Bokoblins. Maybe current Link has to mess with time to stop the past hero's corruption. Yeah, like that's possible. You're definitely going to have to let's play this the second it drops. Yeah. Yeah, obviously I am. Oh, someone makes a good point. Does someone already play the trailer in reverse? No. I don't think we'll hear anything, but I can grab the trailer and reverse the audio. I don't think it's going to do much, but I can do that. We can do that for fun. See what happens. Okay, let's bring up Premiere Pro and reverse ourselves some video footage. <laughs> Oh, I don't care if someone else already did it. I'm going to do it for myself because it's fun. La -da -da -dee. Oh, Premiere Pro, why are you slow? There we go. Yoink. And speed duration, reverse. Let's see if anything happens. Probably not. 2022, though. That could be anything from quarter one to Christmas. <laughs> Looks silly, doesn't it? There was something about the music. Didn't some of that sound like 
ba 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 Or am I just imagining that? That's what it looks like in reverse. <laughs> it sounded a little like that, at least. Hmm. Some someone else who's better at this will probably f like um. Th there'll probably be music theory people who like like note out all the notes and figure out whether it's uh whether it's it's like turned back. Hey, Skyn. While I don't agree with all your takes, I absolutely adore your character analysis. They've given me a lot of stress relief during the dark times. Anyway, keep it up, big man. Can't wait for Elden Ring and stuff. Hey, thank you very much, Oliver. That's very kind of you. That's very kind of you. Ha. Huh. Anyway. Anyway. I think we're done. I think we're done now. I think we're done. I'm, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna watch it one more time. We're just gonna watch it one more time. Just one more time. Yeah, I, we talked about that, Ace Hunter, that some of the music sounds kind of Twilight Princessy. <laughs> I know, George. It's because I really want it. It's not because there's any evidence for it. I want to play it. I want to play it so bad! Ah. <sighs> but yeah, remember when Breath of the Wild 1 was first announced? And Link looked so androgynous that people thought that maybe he was playable Zelda. It's the same thing now. Like, it's exactly the same thing. It's it's because they never show the face of Sky Link. Like, they never show his face. They never show us what, what he looks like from the front. They show us what Ground Link looks like plenty of times. But it's because they keep it just ambiguous enough. That you can kind of go, uh, but but maybe what if what if it could be? Except it's not. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be playable Zelda. It might be playable Ganondorf. Maybe it could. I mean, I think that's not a completely impossible idea that you're playing as the ten thousand years ago Link being corrupted by Ganondorf. Like that's not impossible. But what if you played old hero in the sky, Link in the ground, and Zelda underground? Yeah, I mean it could like. If they have playable Zelda, by the way, if they have playable Zelda, they're not going to show that yet. Like, if if that's a feature of the game, if that's something that they're adding, I'm not surprised if they're not showing it yet. Like, I, that's the kind of thing that you keep for your launch trailer. Like, that's the kind of thing you keep from the for the trailer that you post right before, like, the game starts to go on sale for Christmas or whenever the hell they're, whenever the hell they're going to put. If there is playable Zelda, they're going to hold on to that. Like, that's, that that's something that they'll keep close to their chest, um, because that's the kind of thing you post to get all of the websites to write about you. Like if they if they reveal playable Zelda, they're gonna get articles on every single gaming website. Like just all of them are gonna write tons of articles about like the history of Zelda in in in, in Legend of Zelda, and like oh she's never been a playable character, and like she's this damsel in distress character. Now you can play. Like they're gonna get so much press out of that if they do it. But again. There's no evidence of playable Zelda in this trailer. The only the only reason to think that playable Zelda might be a thing is that Nintendo seems to have realized that the fans want that. But like if but if if we're right about our crazy conspiracy theory that Skylink is the guy that they found down there 
and we're seeing his life leading up to him being corrupted. Um, cause that would be, cause I could see the idea that Link gets possessed by the same force that's corrupting, like that corrupted the corpse of, of like desiccated Ganondorf or whatever. And if what we're seeing is Skylink dealing with that same corruption, like trying to find a cure for it. Then, you know. Because that's the other thing, as, as Maya Lindström as Tom points out, out um, I believe it's most likely just to represent Link becoming his own person in green, which is usually his color rather than blue. Um, and the whole life has been revolved around being right. That's a, that's a plausible explanation. But that's the other thing is like, here's the, here's the color of Link green, like the green color of the hero of Hyrule. That's so traditional, right? But ground Link is still dressed in his typical, in his, uh, like previous blue, like he was in Breath of the Wild one. So like that also like the green to me, and I think Maya has, has a, a, like a plausible interpretation of it but the green to me says okay this is a more traditional link like this is a return to a traditional zelda link color so maybe that also indicates that we're heading back to the past maybe it does <laughs> but yeah like i can see so to summarize the theories that we've come up with we've come up with a theory that this is dry ganon before being like this is the corruption that's going to turn this guy into Ganon, like Ganondorf. And this segment is the past of him trying to find a cure for the corruption or trying to find some way to not become or to seal himself away so that he doesn't damage the world or something. <laughs> the green means link, means link is gay. That's that's true, Anastasia. It probably does. Um, <laughs> and then present day Link is experiencing those memories to find a way to avoid being corrupted the same way. Because he also has his own right arm infected by the same stuff. So that's one theory. The other theory is that there's some kind of time travel shenanigans going on. And that you do stuff in the past with, on the floating islands to change the landscape and environment of the present. So that like, that would be a way. Because as we saw in a, lot of, in a lot of the footage, Hyrule, like ground Hyrule, has not changed. Like it looks like it's exactly the same geography, exactly the same landmarks. And so one way to make the ground map new again would be to go to the past, change something, and then Hyrule in the present changes. And that could explain why these Bokoblins have those giant long horns. What if you go back into the past and you change something so that Bokoblins evolve giant long horns and Moblins instead evolve like little helmet things that they've got on their head, like that kind of stuff. Um, Like, that's not at all impossible, um, that you change the present day of Hyrule by changing the past. Because that's the other thing, like, in terms of, of filmmaking and visual storytelling, right? What we have here is, like, a cross-cut between this drop of water undripping. Like, this, this is clearly time reversing itself, right? A drop of water undripping from having fallen down. And that cuts directly from the drop of water ascending... To Skylink doing a thing, which again is like, oh, this is associated with time travel somehow. Because again, like it's a drop of water, and here he seems to be swimming through the ground of this thing. Like there's some there's something going on there. But yeah, past with Ganon, present with our Link, and future with Zelda in the dungeon. Like, maybe. Yeah, like it's There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways that this could go. Like that's what what Nintendo are doing with this trailer is they're intentionally keeping everything vague enough that crazy people like me can sit here for twelve hours speculating about everything and like come up with incredibly crazy theories and make hour long videos. Um, and what Nintendo knows is that this will keep like lunatics like me speculating about Breath of the Wild two all the way until twenty twenty two. But yeah, playable Zelda has never happened except in um, except in Age of Calamity. Like that's the first time that Zelda has ever been playable, and I don't think I don't think that's gonna change. Um, like I don't think it's likely. I don't think it's likely at all. 
So, yeah, sell the channels fed for months. Yeah, that's true, Fall Guy. I don't think it's likely. I just want it. I want it, and I will find a reason to believe that it could be possible. I will find a reason to. <laughs> like, no matter how impossible, no matter how impossible, I will find a reason. Oh, yeah, in the first Hyrule Warriors as well. This is true. CDI Zelda doesn't count. Like, that one doesn't count. Hyrule Warriors 1 counts. CDI Zelda doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't count. If Breath of the Wild 2 doesn't have more opportunities for Link to cross-dress, I'm not going to buy it on release. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there will be. Like, if I'm, I'm entirely convinced that you'll be able to go back to Gerudo Town and dress up again. But, like, all I want... Like, playable Zelda is, is the thing I really, really want, but... But all I need is that Zelda is not a damsel in distress this time. I just I just want her to do something. I want her to be active in the story and not just waiting for Link to save the world again. That's that's the only thing. I just want her to be an active force in the story. Like doing some archaeology or if it's only cutscenes fine. But just like I don't want her to be passive. <laughs> Remember when you said it was the last replay three replays ago? Yeah, I know. I know. I just, I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just excited. I'm just excited about this. I am just excited about this. She was active in the first Breath of the Wild 2 trailer, so here's hoping. Yeah, that's the thing is like, is like Age of Calamity is canon too, right? Like it's it's just an alternate timeline thing. Um and in Age of Calamity she gets to be like the central character. Oh, hello Mr. Motorcycle Man. Uh she gets to be the central character. Like she's the central character for that story entire. Um Do you think the champions will be a part of the story? No. Uh Oboza and Daruk and Mifa and and uh, and Rivalia dead. They're dead and they're gone. I don't think they're gonna come back. Like I don't I don't think they're gonna show up. Uh, I think they're gonna move on. <sighs> anyway, I'm done. I will end the stream now. I, I I I will I will I promise I will end the stream now. But before I end, I just wanna like talk to chat. Hi, how you doing? Thanks for joining me on my derangement. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in this madness. Because I am excited. I am excited, excited, excited. I am very excited. <sighs> but yeah, thanks for, thanks for hanging out with me. And thanks for getting excited about... Zelda with me. Thanks for getting excited about Metroid with me. Metroid. There's a 2D Metroid game. Can you believe it? I can, because it was rumored for a long time, but man, that was cool. That was a good direct. Saved E3 for me. Like, a lot of people are probably like, there's going to be a million videos like, oh, we're so disappointed they didn't show Bayonetta like, or uh, Fire, Fire Emblem. Like, a lot of people are going to be disappointed about that, but I'm not. I got Metroid 2D and I got Breath of the Wild 2 footage. I'm happy. Anyway, have a good one.